Curve-based joining features are another addition for the 2306 release of NX. These features have been around for a couple of releases, but have been underneath an early access feature toggle. In order to use these for the early access program, you will need to make sure that the curve join is turned on. It is in my environment, um, but with the release of NX2306 in June, this early access toggle will be removed completely and this will be available for all customers. When it comes to curve-based joins, there's roughly two broad categories of types of joins that we support. And the way I'm going to look at them is those that are sort of symbolic in the way they're displayed and those that are a close approximation of what the actual physical product will look like when, um, when the product is created. We'll start by looking at one of our curve-based joining techniques that is something that is meant to be more symbolic. Somebody looking at the model could tell at a glance what that is meant to be based on things such as the color or the shape. So if we go to the curve join command, the arc weld that we have would be one example of that. So when it comes to this, I'll start by selecting the bodies that I want to join. And then I would go and select the curve where I actually want those things to be joined. So I'll actually go along this face here. This would be the area where we want that to go. Um, I'll specify start and end distances. We'll just make that zero so it'll go the entire length. <clears throat> and, you know, we can choose the size that we want to see. I'll make that six millimeters. And then we can also choose a material. Um, we would just go into the standard NX materials list to find the one that we wanted to choose. I'll leave that blank for now. And then we have custom attributes, which are, of course, extendable. Um, this is what you'll see out of the box. But one of the things that's important about this is depending on the type of join that I'm creating, the, the process that I'm applying, that will change the color. So for example, we'll start by calling this a mag weld. Go ahead and click OK. And you can see here we get a nice blue display. You know, that's not what it's going to look like when it's complete, but somebody looking at that may know right away, oh, that's an indication that I need to put a mag weld in that location. I could go and change that. And so if I were to change it to be a, uh, a MIG weld instead, you'll see that the color changes to pink. And, uh, you know, we have something very different. So again, depending on the process type, we have a different representation. This can all be controlled um, to meet the, uh, the demands of the enterprise. Now, another category would be um, a join feature that is actually going to be a somewhat accurate representation of what that solid would look like. So we'll look at the fillet command here. So to define our fillet, we'll actually start by defining some faces. And um, I want to create something that's maybe going to wrap around and go all the way around to the front of this part. And so for face set one, We'll select this guy, this guy, and this guy here. And then on face set two, we'll select these two. Now you can see highlighted in green there, um, we can see our curve. I could grab this and maybe put an offset in there. Um, we'll go six millimeters on both sides. Here, I'll just select that, make that six. And so that'll basically give us the length of our curve. And then I can define things such as the uh, um, you know, the actual cross section that we want. Um, we have the option of either using throat thickness or allowing somebody to specify individual leg lengths. I'm going to go with the throat thickness option. Um, we'll put a, uh, you know, a little bit of a convex bump out on that. You know, we can choose the color that we want. Also apply the material. You know, I can choose what the uh, finish is going to be on that. And then we also have a custom attributes area where you can um, extend this and include whichever attributes are important for your company. So we'll go ahead and create that. And here you can see, you know, we've got something that's been generated. Um, it matches the, uh, you know, the, the, the size that we wanted. It does have a little bit of a convex curvature to it. You know, I can go and modify that and maybe decide that um, I want it to be a little bit smaller. So we'll change the throat thickness down to four. And there you can see we have something that, that looks pretty good for joining that. 
Um, and then let's also look at an example like this, uh, this plate here. Um, the way we want to add that would be to maybe put a, a fillet along here, but we want that backed up with a bevel underneath. So what I'll do here is we'll start with um, the groove weld command, and I'll, I'll, I'll create my bevel first. So with the bevel weld, we'll select the two faces that we want to use. Um, start and end distance, I'm going to leave those at zero. We'll go the entire length. And you can see here the different aspects of the cross section that we want to use. But I'm actually not going to have a root opening. I just kind of want to cut the corner and have a nice um, angled bevel under there. Um, I can choose my, my color. I can choose things such as the contour. Um, I could also apply uh, material. One thing to point out is that if I were to shorten this, I would have the option when it comes to edge prep, meaning um, machining the part so that we could actually put that weld material in there. Um, I'll show that at the end, but uh, we do have an option here to determine how long that should be. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that. And you can see here that we have the nice bevel that's going to go in here. And then we'll go ahead and add in our fillet. Once again, I'll select the two sets of faces for the fillet. Um, we do want to leave those at zero. And then um, I'll go a little bit bigger on my throat thickness here and choose five. <clears throat> and there you can see we've got the fillet on top of the bevel. So what we have here is sort of a combination of some fairly accurate representations of what these look like together with some symbolic ones. But I should point out that on all of them, if we were to go to look at their properties, you can see on both the symbolic one, we've got a length, so we know how long that is. Um, and then we can also see the same type of information on the ones that are accurate there. But we can go in and see the actual, uh, you know, we've got volume, we've got the length of that segment.